Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me today on Friday. Hallelujah. September 23rd, 2022. It is 3.35 p.m. Eastern Time as I speak. Uh, guys, thank you so much for joining me, praying. As always, you're having an amazing day. If not, I'm praying you've got the strength and the stuff inside you that you know is in there to make it an amazing day. But guys, uh, thank you so much for joining me today as we continue this daily devotional. And today's title, I tell you what, I could just sit there and stare at that background. I don't know about you guys, but that's that's gorgeous. Uh, the, the title of the day is uh, the, the Warmth of the Sun. So I just went ahead and typed in Sunrise, Sunset. And as you know, you think about that, the sun doesn't move. <laughs> I don't know why we call it a sunrise and a sunset. It's the earth that's revolving and moving and rotating and all that around the, the moon. But you, you understand what I'm saying. I think a video a couple of days ago talked about you know, God's amazing creation, how he perfectly placed us, but I don't know why we call it a sunrise. Uh, it's anyway, guys, I'm getting off track already. I'm just excited because it's Friday, but our title today is the warmth of the sun and our study scriptures. And this isn't me. I'm not doing it to you this time. Our author is, it is Psalm six, the entire Psalm. There's 10 verses, guys. I just read it and it's, it spoke to me. Uh, it spoke to me. I had to read it a couple of times and, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good one. It is a good one. And it's going to be, again, highlighted uh, the uh, in the description of this video. There's going to be a link there. Guys, and most of the times I do the New Living Translation, please feel free when you click on that. Read it in the King James. Read it in the the, 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 the Passion, the Message, the Amplified, the, whatever translation speaks to you guys. Don't just, just because I picked that one verse. Pick one that speaks to you, okay? Just compare, just compare some to make sure some of them can get a little far fetched. So that's the one thing we gotta be careful on when it comes to reading the word of God. But anyway, our lead off verse. So yes, all of Psalm six, and our lead off verse is Psalm six, verse six. And the word of God says, I am worn out from my groaning. I don't know, it sounds like something I wrote. Um, all night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. Yeah, Lord. Yes, indeedy. Uh, thank you, Lord. Um, Bill Crowder is our author today. And he writes this. In 1963, just a tad before my time, the Beach Boys, Brian Wilson and Mike Love wrote a song quite unlike the band's typical up upbeat tunes. It was a mournful song about love that's been lost. I might have to go listen to this song. Uh, Mike said later, as hard as that kind of loss is, the one good that comes from it is having had the experience of being in love in the first place. I like that. Oh, I'll repeat that. As hard as that kind of loss is, losing love, the good that comes from it is having had the experience of being in love in the first place. Um, I think there's, I think there's a phrase, a common phrase in saying out there, it's better to have lost love than to never have loved at all, something like that. That's a tough one, though. Uh, they titled it The Warmth of the Sun. Sorrow as a catalyst for songwriting is nothing new. That's so true. I mean, we're going now we're going back to Psalms. Some of David's most moving songs were penned in times of deep personal loss, including Psalm 6. Though we aren't told the events that prompted its writing, the lyrics are filled with grief. They are. It's, it's a it's a it's a, it's a powerful song, guys. Um, I am worn out from my groaning. All night long, I flood my bed with weeping. But that's not where the song ends. David knew pain and loss, but he also knew God's comfort. Guess which one of those outweighs the other? <laughs> he wrote, the Lord has heard my cry for mercy. Even in grief, there is reason to trust God. I mean, so that's the only thing there is to trust in when you're grieving. Um, in the warmth of his presence, our sorrows gain a hopeful perspective. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, oh, my. Guys, this one uh, is going to let it speak for itself, really, because there's I could add so much scripture that will back up sorrow and grief and the Lord's comfort and seeking him and trusting him. These are all things that should not come new to us by now i'm praying um you know uh, what's the verse that he uh he, he's he's close to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit 
guys, when you're seeking God and putting him first and your heart is aching when you're me personally, I'm just going to give you a perfect example. Um, I don't know how many months ago it's been now. I made the video and I made the announcement. I had to have my dog put to sleep. My dog was my best friend for 11, 11 years. Um, and I had anticipated that day coming when it was going to have to happen. And I, I told everybody that I'm going to be a complete wreck. I'm going to be a mess. I'm probably going to take bereavement from work. I'm going to take five days off because I'm going to, I'm going to be fit to be tired. But you know what, guys? God knew how hard my heart hurt. Even though I didn't feel the pain, God, God took it from me. He comforted me. It was only God's grace, mercy, and love that I was allowed to get through that whole situation. Yeah, I shed a tear. Yes, I missed my dog. But guess what? My dog is no longer in pain. And my dog is no longer walking on this sin-filled earth that's run by Satan. So guys, that's something we just need to keep in mind when we lose a loved one. You know, if we're talking about a, you know, the Bible says have gone to sleep or we're just going to see what we say when someone dies, you know, that yes, that could be painful. We're going to miss people. But if we can just get pounded in our head, that eternity is just around the corner. Eternity, guys. So you're only separated for a brief amount of time when you compare it to eternity. Now, loss of a loved one, you know, relationships that break up and part your ways. They can be, they can be heartbreaking and all that. I get that. But the main thing, guys, is to know, just to know that you're focused on God. You're focused on Christ. He's the one who's going to comfort you and all your need. And we said scripture the other day about because when he comforts you, then you're able to comfort others that are going through the same thing. But guys, this is just a, you know, a beautiful one. And I, for me personally, you know, there's many nights I just lay in bed and I, I just cry. I'm like, you know, I just, Jesus, come get me. I just can't stand to see what's going on anymore. And I believe it's verse seven when I read this, the the, the, the following verse of our, our lead off. It says, my eyes are blurry because of what I see. So he said, I mean, this is the things that David was seeing were making him cry. And you've heard me say before, folks, that, that the man, the more you know Christ, and the more you know who you are, the more you see. And God put on me clearly, do you see? And me and my brother Dave, were, I, I don't want to see anymore. I, I don't want to see anymore because my eyes hurt. I cry, I weep, my heart aches because of where this world's at. There's too many people out there that just take this so lightheartedly. Oh, you know, yeah, 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 I believe in God. That's good enough to get me through the day. Man, if we don't make Jesus Christ the Lord of our life, Folks, I'm telling you, it's dangerous, it's dangerous, it's dangerous, and it's time for us to reach our loved ones that don't that don't have Jesus Christ as the Lord of their life. Do we love them enough to risk, you know, to, to, to roll the dice and say, look, you know, you need to make Jesus Lord of your life because if he returns, you're, you're already headed straight for hell, and we're going to be separated. Not only are we going to be separated for eternity, you're going to be separated for God, from God for eternity. That's hell, right? pure hell, total separation from God for eternity. But to me, that's like the... There's no, there's no greater loss than that other than when Christ, you know, when God gave his son to, to die, that was, a, that was probably, that's definitely the biggest loss than what we'll ever know and experience. But guys, this is just, I don't know, it, this is, I believe this one's going to speak to each and every one of us different. If you get, you know, you know, get alone again, like I repeatedly say, get that Psalm 6, read it, find another translation, read it again, find another translation, read it again. Just let it speak to you guys and just have just have the Holy Spirit minister to you and read it slowly. Don't just don't just skim through it and blow through it, guys. Take it serious. This this is the word of the living, breathing word of God, scripture, breathed out and inspired by our daddy, our creator, for our benefit, for our growth, and for you know, and for Christ to have died for us and what he's done for us, us to just take it so lightheartedly and just skim over it and check it off for the day. That's we got to We got to be better than that, folks. We got to. It's time that we rise up, come together. And uh, I, I know God's moving. I know he's moving in mighty ways. But guys, thank you for joining me today. Uh, I just pray that you will read this. And I just pray that he speaks boldly and clearly to you and just kicks you up that to that next level of uh, discipleship. And, uh, you know, just just increases your faith and your boldness, guys. So until tomorrow on Saturday, hallelujah. Enjoy the rest of your day. And we'll see what the Lord says then. I love you guys.